Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Ella Rose. This is my presentation with a highly descriptive title. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about myself and my background, how I got to this spot, and then also a little bit about my project. So I grew up in Corvallis, Oregon, um, which if you don't know is right at the junction of two rivers. It's about 45 minutes from the coast, about 30 minutes from the foothills of the Cascades. And that's important because I like to say that I was raised by water in a lot of different ways. And it also lent itself to my family being very, very outdoorsy. I grew up skiing, whitewater kayaking, fly fishing, hiking, kind of you name it. We were out there doing that, especially during the summer up in the Cascades. My parents are also scientists, which has also uh, definitely informed the way that I turned out. I credit my love of field work with the very outdoorsy aspect of my childhood, and I have to give my parents a little bit of credit for my love of biology. Uh, my dad is a middle school biology teacher, and my mom worked in the Oregon State Department of Fisheries and Wildlife for most of my childhood. Now, the final kind of piece in understanding how my childhood shaped who I became today, academically, is that I spent a lot of time at the Oregon Coast Aquarium, and that's where the love of marine biology comes in. So my grandparents moved to the Oregon coast, and if you've ever been there, it is gray and cloudy all the time, and if you're a kid in particular, it is quite boring. So they used to take me to the aquarium all the time. Uh, this was my favorite exhibit at the aquarium. This is called Passages of the Deep, and this is the open ocean one. There's lots of fascinating animals in here. I particularly loved the sharks, and I am so serious when I say that 10-year-old Ella would have stood there and stared at the sharks all day if people had let her. I would have to be practically dragged away. I've just always been very fascinated by the ocean, and this led to people giving me ocean-related gifts, you know, me reading ocean-related books and things like that. And it really built up in me this love for marine science. And my grad school hope is that I'm gonna go back to the United States and work with sharks. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here. We skipped undergrad and my project. And believe it or not, I'm not actually working with sharks because I wanted to try something new and different and fun that I don't know as much about for my Fulbright project. So for college, I went to Amherst College, which is in Western Massachusetts. It's a small school. There's no marine biology there. There were a lot of other things that I really liked about Amherst, obviously, that drew me there. I majored in biology and Spanish. I graduated last May. And one of the things that I really loved about Amherst was uh, the open curriculum. So I was able to take all sorts of things and really lean into an interdisciplinary sort of approach to my education, which has also informed my interest now. This was my undergraduate thesis. I kind of fell into this plant niche in college, and I'll tell you why that's important in a second. But my undergraduate thesis was titled Character Displacement and Reproductive Success in Impatience Capensis. I was studying character displacement, which is this phenomenon depicted right here. And then this was one of my study organisms. This was Impatience pallida, actually, the competitor for Impatience capensis that was potentially causing this phenomenon called character displacement. For this thesis, I spent so much time outside in really hot weather because it was a drought year in Massachusetts, which also led to my data being horrible, but that's a whole other can of worms. I did a lot of pollinator observations, so I would just sit or stand for hours and count bees and things like that, and I would collect seeds all day, and I absolutely loved it. I discovered through this that I love research. I just very inherently love research and its process, regardless to its direct connections to my kind of secondary or primary interests. So yeah, that's the punchline. I love research and conservation, but marine eco ecology has always been the end game, and I think that's something that I have always understood. This also seems like a good spot to mention again that I really value interdisciplinary studies. And that's particularly true going into this Fulbright. I worked as a park ranger last summer. It was very formative. And I just really enjoyed presenting natural resources and sharing them with people in a way that took into account things like cultural studies and history and other aspects of you know, science and the earth, like climate and like geology. 
So now we get to my Fulbright project. This is where I am based right now. I'm in Concepcion, based at Universidad de Concepcion. And this is the view from my window in my room. And I'm really close to the university. It's very awesome. This right here is the university. This here is kind of the boundary. So I'm very excited about the fact that I can spend a lot of time on campus. And I have a little office there that I share with a grad student. And I can just be in there. And I absolutely love that. Come on. <coughs> so now a little bit about my project. Before I get too much into that, I need to explain what a trophic model is. So we all remember food webs from middle school and high school biology, right? So that's basically what a trophic model is. But it has greater implications, and it allows us to bring in these kind of additional outside factors. It's a web of who is eating who through the framework of thinking of it as a transfer of energy and also with some sort of predictive power. Because we can see what will happen if sources of energy increase or are depleted. So let's say that species A eats species B. Well, if species A population decreases, then we probably expect species B to increase. That's the power of a trophic model. It's an important conservation tool. So my goal with my project is I want to fit whales, particularly blue whales, into this trophic model of an area with very threatened fisheries. And I'm going to be able to do that by identifying links between whale presence and song. Those things are sort of synonymous, but not quite. Plankton consumption, and then fish population fluctuations. So I will be able to use whales as a predictor of fishery collapse, hopefully by the end of this. And that makes whales this term called an indicator species. I've got four study methods going on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some field work. And my affiliate, his name is Sergio, but I'm actually going to do this field work with a woman named Susanna, who's a collaborator of his. So I'm going to travel to field sites, and I'm actually going to be out on a boat participating in data collection. So that's going to be through using something called a hydrophone, which is I mean, truly just a giant microphone that you put in the water and pick up whale sounds. It's really that simple, as well as some whale observation. And then with Sergio, my affiliate, I'm going to be doing some trophic modeling. That's kind of his primary area of study. So I'm hoping to connect whales and then also possibly additional species, depending on the hydrophone data that I collect. And I'll be connecting those whales to plankton and fish, as I talked about earlier. Now, now we have to bring in some acoustic data. So Susanna has already collected but not fully analyzed some whale sounds from previous seasons, which gives me additional predictive power. She's only studied the blue whale songs that she's heard on those recordings, but the hydrophone picks up things indiscriminately. So there are recordings of whale songs of other species. And so I might even have a chance to bring in further species into this model. And then I'm also going to be able to attend some courses. Somebody else here talked about the possibility of doing that. But I have the freedom to audit and drop in on courses. And this is really helpful, especially because of my undergrad background. So in this fall semester right now, I'm looking at the curriculum for these marine science majors and deciding, OK, what information do I need in order to better kind of supplement this project? And then I'm going to take an ecological modeling course in the spring that's taught by my affiliate. And then that is sort of going to transition into this sort of final goal of uh, putting whales into this trophic model. So the order of events, I'm going to meet with the whale researcher next week, do some background reading, create a field schedule, attend fall courses, study acoustic data, and do the field work in this fall and winter. And then winter spring is when the trophic modeling course happens. Maybe I continue to study acoustic data and then create that trophic model. I don't need to talk about challenges because nobody else really did. I thought we were supposed to do that. Um, <laughs> these are the URLs to the images that I used. Now, thank you all, and I'm happy to answer any questions.